watching on the different social channels. Um, we have Johan Santana and Josh Tolley, uh, both gentlemen, in addition to uh, what we'll speak about, what we're commemorating, will be participating in Old Timers Day on August 27th. Josh has already agreed to actually catch because he, he still can. Looks like he can go the whole way. But, uh, but really, we're, uh, we're, it's really a pleasure to have uh, Johan Santana. And uh, he's a two-time Cy Young Award winner, four-time All-Star. Johan pitched four years with the Mets including an all-star season in 2009, posted a 2.98 ERA in 29 starts in 2010, but he will forever be remembered for his 134 pitch no hitter on June 1st, 2012 versus St. Louis, the team's first no hitter after 8,019 regular season games. And still to this date, uh, there has not been a second one. So, uh, uh, Josh uh, Tolley, again, thank you for joining us. Josh was drafted by the Mets in the 13th round in 2005. He played eight seasons in the majors, including four in New York from 2009 to 2012. He caught Johan's historic no-hitter and was R.A. Dickey's personal catcher during his 20-win Cy Young season as well in 2012. So uh, thank you, uh, gentlemen. We are also uh, here, of course, to talk about the uh, the upcoming ceremony which will commemorate the historic no hitter night and it will take place on Tuesday May 31st prior to the uh, 7 10 p.m game that night against the Nationals uh, tickets can be had for that game as well as of course the old timers game at Mets.com slash tickets appreciate inclusion uh, of that note in all your coverage and uh, with that um, I think we'll begin with with Johan. Uh, Johan, before we take any questions, if I can uh, uh, allow you to speak a few words about uh, this upcoming historic uh, uh, anniversary and uh, and celebration from that that night, uh, if you can recollect and share some of your thoughts. Well, I can't believe it's it's been ten years almost, you know, since uh, since we made history. Uh, Every time you look back, you know you you think about it, and 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 you bring back those memories, and it's always like, wow, I couldn't believe I, I've, I've done that, you know. Uh, but you know, it's part of of what we do. It's part of history now. Uh, uh, you get people, you know, from time to time, that uh, they say hello to you, and they talk about that. And social media, you get a lot of those. Um, most of the times, you know, when uh, uh, S and Y, you know, re air the, the game, you know, you get those messages back. So it's always cool to have that. I mean, it's uh, it was it was a fun time and 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 and, and uh, a memory that I'll never forget. Thank you, Johan. Uh, Josh, uh, same uh, question. If we could uh, have you share some of your sentiments and thoughts from that historic night. Sure. Thanks for having me, um, everybody. Harold J. Uh, appreciate it. And it was, um, as Johan echoed, 10 years. It, it truly seems like it was yesterday. Um, it, it was, for me, going through and navigating the game, getting deeper into the game, is what will always forever stand out. And as SNY was airing the, the no-hitter over the course of pretty much all winter, I, I would seem to find it once a week. I would go back and try to relive, uh, relive the game. And getting into the seventh, eighth inning, um, Johan still cruising, trying to figure out how we're going to navigate the pitch count thing was, um, was a special, that was, that was probably more special to be able to get him help get him through to that point, um, where, uh, it, it not get into the 145 pitch pitch mark, but, um, it will be a day that I, I live, it lives with me forever. And, um, I, that, that's the only thing in my career that I, I do tend to talk about because it is something that was very special to me. <laughs> That is, uh, that's great. Thanks for sharing, uh, Josh. And a reminder uh, <clears throat> now for all, uh, all the media that's joined us, please use the raise your hand tab at the bottom of the screen to ask a question. And uh, with that, we are gonna start uh, with the Eddie Coleman. Ed, your line is open. Hey guys, good to see you both. Johan, Josh. Hey, Hi Eddie. 
How you doing, guys? You look great you see, man. right now, man. Um, uh, first, I got a question for each of you, Johan, first. Um, you won a couple of Cy Youngs, as, as Harold said. Uh, you had the pitching triple crown, I think, too, in 2006, strikeouts and ERA and that. I just wanted, Johan, where this, where this fits in your you know, pantheon of, of what you accomplished during your career. You know, as a, as a player, uh, when, you, when you start your career, you hope that you can make it to, to the big leagues. You know, you hope that you have a chance to play the game. And, 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 and when you achieve all these kind of things, as time goes by and then you start playing and, and, and you see a lot of things, when you look back, you look, you, you feel really good because you, 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 can, you can tell and, and you can actually say that it was, it was well done. Now, when you see all those numbers and when you see these things and you're like, sometimes I ask myself, wow, did I do all that? You know, because when you're active, you don't really think about it. But as you start going and as, as, as years go by, you can see how everything starts coming up. And then you, now you have kids, now I have my son, and then they want to know what, what's going on. And you look back and you're like, wow. But every time, every time you see, like now I'm coaching middle school, help, trying to help out school. Now you see these kids and every time they talk about something, they talk about the no hitter. You know, they talk mm -hmm. about the no hitter. What's, uh, that was one of the highlights of my career. No question about it. It ranks really high. It's a performance, you know, uh, just a one one game performance that that took off, and then now it, it's there. But it always feels good. But it's definitely right down the top. And the other question for you: um, after the eighth inning, when you went in, what was the conversation with Terry about the pitch count at that point? No, he asked me how I felt. I said I felt good, and I'm not was not, I'm not coming out. And then <laughs> and then he told me I was his hero. But see, every time we talk about these things, you know, I think 120, 125, 135 pitches, it didn't matter. You know, it was just the, the opportunity that I had, that I had then to do something that I never done. And then um, we knew it was this close to make history. You know, you take that chance, you know, regardless of, of how you feel or anything. It's not about just you, how you feel. It's just the whole situation of how everything was going. You know, and in fact, you know, uh, from the beginning of the game, you know, I didn't have my best stuff that night, you know, so we all knew that, but I was able to manage through the whole thing, just like Tully said, you know, so we battled through it and then it just happened to be on that spot, on that position. So um, I just took my chance. Thanks, Johan. And, and Josh, for you, uh, I, I know Freeze was the last out, but the two outs before that, I think it was Holiday and, and maybe Craig, both had kind of flares, uh, one to center and one to left. Were you, were you worried off the bat that those were going to fall in? No, I, I don't think. Eddie, good to see you first and foremost. Um, you too, Josh. You, you don't. You, I, I was so one pitch ahead, one pitch ahead. Like whatever happened, happened in my mind. Um, now I do remember the excitement. Like as the ball goes up, you're 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 yelling and screaming, which was very uncharacteristic of myself. Like in in in. Um, so you knew that they were not squared up. They were not hit well. And those are those balls are the ones that will break up no hitters. Yeah. And you, you do hold your breath for a second. But um, you, listen, we had a speedy outfield. We had a, we had a good group out in the outfield. Uh, Baxter obviously came out of the game. But uh, to fill the void, I think Torres came in um, to fill in for him. So we yeah. did have a speedy outfield. But you do I, I do remember clinching and holding my breath um, – and yelling in and in a lot um, in that last inning. Thanks, Josh. Good to see you guys. Good to see you, Eddie. See you. Thank you all. Next up will be uh, Tony Tacomo. Tony, your line's open. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Uh, this is for either or both of you. I'm just curious, you know, as, as the game is progressing, how aware are you in the moment? Not just, obviously, that that Johan's throwing a no-hitter, but that this is something that hadn't previously happened in Mets history and that it was going to be a bigger kind of deal to the fan base, to the city, because of that. So you want to have that? I'll tell I can take that one. Anthony, good to see you as well. I, um, it, it's funny because as we're going through the game, you, you're, trying, you're going pitch to pitch, out to out, inning to inning. Um, and I didn't even realize until we came off the field that it was the first one um, in the history, really. I mean, the, the amount of arms that have come through there, the Ryans, the Seavers, I'm, I'm going to leave a thousand people out, so I'll just stop there. 
was, I mean, you think that this has never happened and how this has never happened in the longevity of the Mets career was, was baffling to me. So at that moment, it hits even closer to home when, when you hear it put into those kind of terms. Yeah, I agree. I agree hundred percent. You know, we had, a, I, I, you know, like I say, I never had a, a, a thought that, uh, that I was going to throw no hitter that night. You know, it just, it just happened. You know, in fact, the beginning of the game was kind of rough, you know, trying to command all my pitches and then, and then, couple walks and all that. So at that point, you, you like, hopefully, you know, I make it through five, six innings, you know, and then, and then we go from there, but it just happened. It just happened. You know, it's, 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 it's one of those things that uh, regardless, it doesn't matter what people say. That's something that you cannot just call it and do it. That's not, that's not how it works. You know, it just happened as you go and, it, and, and you have to go one out at a time. Because just like you guys were talking about, you know, you can have the best night and you just got a little blooper and boom, it's over, you know, and you can still throw, you know, a great game and everything, but it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. It's over. And then, or you're going to have something where you don't feel your best, but everything works and it happened. And that's what happened that night. Thank you. Thank you, Johan. Let's uh, next go to uh, Mike Puma. Mike, your line's open. Hey, Johan, hope all is well. I just wondering, how much have you watched Jacob DeGrom pitch, and are you surprised that he hasn't thrown a no-hitter yet? Well, you know, uh, it's a great pitcher. He was a, a, a great, uh, a great uh, human being, you know, because we hang out together when he was, uh, when I was rehabbing, he was rehabbing down in, in, in Port St. Lucie, and then I, I really think it's just a matter of time, you know, but again, just like uh, Tolly said, you know, all, all the amount of arms and everything that has gone through thousands, uh, it's just, it's tough, you know, he, he has great stuff and he has everything that it takes to do it, you know, and then uh, I think we're getting closer. I don't know when it's going to happen. I mean, I'm not, I cannot predict the future, but if, uh, if I have to pick a pitcher that can do it, he's definitely uh, one of them that can do it. Thank you. You got it. Josh Lewin, we'll come to you next. Sorry, guys, had to unmute. Good to see you both. You look great. Hey, Josh. Uh, question for both of you, and Josh, if you want to take it first, and Johan, you can follow up if you want. How connected do you guys still feel, not only to the Mets, but to Major League Baseball? Josh, I know you're currently doing stuff with the Players Association, so maybe you feel like you're still in it, but... And Johan, you mentioned, you know, you're coaching middle school and all that, but that's not exactly the same as being in, in spring training. So just wondering uh, how you both still have that connectivity going, if you do. Um, I, yeah, I, I do. I, I'm a baseball rat. I love watching baseball. I, I actually have a TV to my left where I do my lessons and I watch spring training games. I, it's something that's been ingrained in me forever. I think last year being my first year out of playing was um, I didn't, it was just a transition year. This year is a little bit different for me. Now sitting back, um, watching watching the games, kind of missing spring training a little bit. But I, I have to say the Mets have been wonderful to me. I did the fantasy camp, um, you know, old timers day, these type of things. I, I think this is what keeps me connected to the game uh, more than anything. And. Johan? Well, for, for me, for me, uh, not as much as, as was totally doing uh, MLB, you know, but I mean, last year with the Twins, I had a chance to, 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 to do a couple games on TV and stuff and get connected to and closer to, to the game is always good. Uh, right now, what I'm doing is I'm spending time with my family uh, and I'm helping out at school with uh, pitching and, 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 and middle school. You know, as as a baseball player, I don't think you lose that. You know, you you always have it some somehow. You know, uh, whether it's directly to MLB or not, it's it's just a matter of what you wanted to do. You know, in my case, uh, spending time with my family is one of the the most important things and the first thing that I wanted to do. But I definitely in the future, hopefully, I'll, I'll look forward. You know, to join an organization and and help out because um, I think. Um, I can help a lot. It's just that right now, I just want to have some fun with my family and I'm enjoying uh, middle school baseball, believe it or not. 
Um, Matthew Roberson, your line is open. Hi, Josh. Hi, Johan. Uh, this question can be for both of you. I'm curious, you know, we've talked a lot about how the no-hitter is the only one in Mets history. Is that something you hope remains true forever? Are you hoping that no one ever throws a no-hitter again for the Mets, or do you want to see someone kind of join you in that class? Oh, no. It's, uh, you know, records are meant to be broken. There's no question about it. You know, what? one thinks that, that it's not going to change the fact that, that we're the first one, you know, so that definitely, hopefully uh, uh, in the near future, you know, you have uh, new pitchers that can join that club, but definitely uh, it's, a, it's a special club. And then I'll be more than happy because I think when that, something like that happened, all the fans will enjoy it and the, the baseball will, will enjoy something like that. So definitely, uh, hopefully uh, pretty soon, you know, there'll be more pitchers into it. And hey, Matthew, I'll, I'll echo the same thing. I mean, baseball is a fraternity. I mean, everybody is so, so close with one another. Like you, you want guys to succeed. You want guys to break records. As Johan said, records are meant to be broke. And I, I would much agree with the same thing. I think it would be great for the city, great for the organization. So um, as, as I think somebody alluded to a while ago, there's a, that starting rotation this year has a chance to do it. I think if, if, if there will be one in baseball. 100%. If I can follow up real quick, have either of you talked to Carlos Beltran about the ball that hit the foul line? No, not at all. You know, no, no, no. Uh, see, those are the things that, that you don't know. As a player, we don't know any of that stuff. You know, uh, uh, when you, especially for me as a pitcher, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the mound, I'm pitching. I didn't know uh, what happened. You know, I just know that an umpire made a, a, a call and that's, that's about it. You have to go back and get the next throw the first, the next pitch and trying to get them out, you know, and that's what we did, but we never talk about those things, no. All right. Mark Roseman, your line is open. Quick, got to unmute here, Mark. Hey, thanks, Harold. Uh, Johan, the first question's for you. Uh, up until that point, you had been in 11 postseason games. Uh, how does the pressure differ between uh, being in a postseason game and, and knowing as the innings went on, how close you were to the no-hitter. And, and Josh, I know that Harold mentioned that you were R.A. Dickey's uh, personal catcher. If I remember correctly, you didn't catch his first one-hitter. I think you caught the second one, which is about a week after, I think, no, Johan's uh, no-hitter. Um, what was that going through your head as, like, thinking that maybe this is deja vu, maybe there's going to be another one within the week? You know, Mark, you don't really – I have to tell you – being behind the plate, you're so entrenched and focused on, as, as I say, pitch to pitch, inning to inning, that it really doesn't come, you, you really don't even think about it until you get really, really deep into games, into the, you know, eighth inning, ninth inning. Um, it, it just, it never really, it re never really stood out to me um, as the no hitter. I mean, it took me a while to really grasp that we were throwing a no hitter before you could even, it, it could even compute, then the game's over. Um, so I, I think when you're behind the plate, there's so many different things that happen in the game that like, that's much of a, that's a thought that is an afterthought more than anything. And hey, can you, can you go back to, to, to the first question? Cause I, I lost the listening to totally. <laughs> Hold on one second. We'll get Mark. Yeah. On. There you go. Go ahead, Mark. Right, yeah, Johan, I mentioned that prior to that no hitter, you had been in 11 postseason games. And I'm just wondering, how does the pressure differ um, being in the postseason game as opposed to as those innings wore on for the no hitter? Well, you know, for me in that situation, uh, the difference is that, you know, everything happened on one on one one day. You know, there's no a five game series. There's no seven game series. It's not best four or seven, none of that stuff, you know? So, so this is different, but the thing is it could end up in one pitch, you know, one hit and you're out, you know, and it's still in the middle of the season, you still have a long way to go. And it, it would have been just another good performance, great performance, whatever you want to call it. But the difference is that when that, when you get to that last two innings and especially to that last inning, everything becomes like a, like a, like a world series type of uh, atmosphere. If, 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 if you will, because, you know, the way you celebrate a middle of the season game, you know, you celebrate like you won the whole thing, you know, and, and to me, that's, what's very special. The way we went into, 
into in 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 in, in on, on the field, but also the way the fans uh, lived. You know, I think that was uh, the most memorable uh, thing for me that night that we celebrate like we won the whole thing. You know, the toughest thing is that we have to to get up the next day and go back to work. Thank you, Johan. Uh, Tim Healy will come to your line next. Hello, everybody. I have a follow-up question for Johan. When you talk about maybe getting back into baseball down the line when the kids grow up a little bit, what sort of job do you think you would like, whether broadcasting or coaching, majors or minors, or, or anything else that might come to mind? I, I don't really know. You know, I think all I know it's, uh, you know, as a, as a former player, you have a lot of knowledge. And then the other thing I can tell you, even though the game has changed, the way people look at, uh, at the game and stats and stuff like that, you still need to have uh, players that play the game that knows what it takes to get on the mound rather to get on the computer. That, that's my personal opinion. You know, I think uh, nowadays you got a lot of, a lot of coaches that, that are good. They have a lot of knowledge. They know how to get a computer, but the question is, have they ever been on a mount, experienced something like that? So mm -hmm. when you have both, what kind of player, what kind of coaching did you get? You know, to me, uh, and, and and you can ask former players, you know, they play the game, not now, but then, you know, that uh, I'm pretty sure they all agree with what I'm saying. I'm not trying to put anything or any words on, on, on their mouth, but I think, you know, when you play the game and you have knowledge, you have a chance to, to, to make people better. And that's just my opinion. Now, that being said, um, here right, I'm here right now in, in, in Fort Myers, just, just doing my, living my life with my family, you know. But I know at some point uh, in my life, uh, I want to continue uh, doing what I love, you know, which is baseball. How much do you identify as a Met versus as a twin? No, there's two different things, you know, but I mean, two different moments in my career, but I love uh, every single minute that I spent on both teams, you know, different, different fan base, different, uh, different organization. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, when you, when you go around and you go back and you think what and you, and you think about what you did and uh, it is great, you know, I've been with Minnesota um, I was with Minnesota eight years, but I, in the last few years, I always go back to do uh, the Twins Hall of Fame. And, and, and it's mm -hmm. always good when you go back and you see fans. I uh, haven't had the chance to do that in New York, but I'm in New York, uh, you know, uh, a few times uh, after that no hitter, not with the team. But when you when you go around and you see people and, and, and they uh, they uh they treat you nice. That makes you feel really good. And that make you feel like, you know, wow, I can not believe I, 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 I did all this, you know, so, but it makes me feel really good and happy. Thank you. You got it. And uh, time for, uh, looks like one final question from uh, Jerry Beach. Go ahead, Jerry. Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking the time today. Uh, my question is, you know, back when uh, you went through the no hitter, there was, um, it was very unusual to hear about pitch counts in a no-hitter, and particularly unusual for a pitcher to be lifted in a no-hitter. Uh, and since then, there's been seven combined no-hitters. And I wonder for both of you, what do you think of, of the idea of a combined no-hitter? And, and, and when you're watching games, if you're watching games or hearing about no-hitters in progress, do you think it back to, to, to your time together and hope that the guy pitching it can complete it? Well, you definitely hope that, that one pitcher can complete it. You know, I mean, we can have an argument here and go back 30, 40 years ago, see how, how baseball was. I believe in evolution. I believe everything changed. No question about it for the better. Uh, but when you go back, you know, and you think about this, you, do you think it's going to happen again? We don't know. But at the end of the day, when you throw a no hitter, whether it is, uh, 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 you know, as you, as a pitcher, solo, or, or as a team or with your combined, uh, at the end of the day, I think baseball wins, fan base wins, and, 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 and that's what everybody wants, you know, uh, to win and enjoy that moment. And I, I'll say this from a catching perspective, to, to call a game and be part of that, I don't care if it was eight pitchers or one pitcher, right. it's obviously harder with one pitcher because you're rolling through the lineup multiple times, but 
from a catching standpoint, it's so hard to do. And I used to tell Mark Burley this, a guy that had a perfect game and a no-hitter. Like, being part of a no-hitter was by far one of the most challenging things of my career navigating through the game. But the, throwing a perfect game would be, I mean, you have no wiggle room. I mean, you, you can kind of, you don't ever have to give in when you're in the midst of a no hitter, when you're in the midst of a perfect game, like you, you got to be really fine and really calculated. So I, I do to your question, Jerry, I, I think the idea of um, whether it's one or five, 10, whatever it is, um, I, I think it's still a cool feat for all parties that were involved. Thank you very much uh, for everybody's questions. Josh and Johan, thank you for the time and uh, for sharing all these sentiments. A reminder that the, uh, the ceremony to commemorate the 10th anniversary will happen on Tuesday, May 31st, prior to the uh, 710 game versus the Nationals. Uh, again, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much and uh, appreciate your time. And we look forward to uh, these upcoming very uh, special nights and celebrating with you all. Thanks, Harold. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. See you in New York. We live it. <laughs> it's, not right. totally. it's not for everybody, Tolly. It's not for everybody, Tolly. Johan and Josh and Jay, you all are going to stay on. We're going to knock out the podcast. We're going to let uh, give a couple minutes for everybody else to to exit the Zoom room and uh, leave. Uh,